Hi everyone, my name is Kevin and welcome to the orchestration section of the ML, ML Up Zoom Camp. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about workflow orchestration. Uh, in the previous section, you learned from Christian how to use MLflow as both an experiment tracker and a module, model registry. And in the last video specifically, there was also a discussion about how you could get a candidate model and then promote it from staging to production. In this section, we're going to be talking about uh, how you can orchestrate these processes and put them on a schedule or auto automate them with workflow orchestration. Uh, and specifically, I'm going to be talking about workflow orchestration with Prefect. Um, and Theo, on the other hand, will be talking about uh, machine learning pipelines with Kubeflow. So a bit about me. Uh, I am an open source community engineer at Prefect. Prior to join, So Prefect is both the company and the open source project. Prior to Prefect, I was a data scientist for four years. And as part of my data scientist job, I was uh, involved in end-to-end -end machine learning pipelines from uh, doing the ETL to get my data in to machine performing the data science and machine learning and then deploying them uh, using these kinds of workflow orchestration tools. Um, so I I'm very familiar with MLflow uh, and uh, workflow orchestration. Uh, outside of work, I contribute to another open source project called Fugue. Fugue is an abstraction layer for distributed computing. So what we do is we take your Python, Pandas, or SQL code, and we bring it to distributed backends such as Spark or Dask. And then I also am the organizer of the machine or Orlando machine learning meetup. So for our agenda today, I'll just briefly go over this, uh, this uh, Google Doc, which shows the outline. In the first video, we're going to be talking about what negative engineering is and what workflow orchestration is. This is more theoretical. We're just going to put uh, some uh, uh, define the grammar for which we talk about these problems. And then I'm going to show uh, introduce you guys to Prefect, specifically Prefect 2.0, and how we can uh, use Prefect um, in, in, in this use case of uh, training a model with MLflow. And in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to take the previous notebook and we're going to make a full script with it. And once we do that, we will uh, to convert it from a, from a normal Python script into a prefect flow uh, together. And we're going to show the basic features of prefect. And once we can get that, we will move on to video number four, where we will uh, deploy prefect remotely, fully open source, fully free on your AWS VM that you set up for this uh, course or any other cloud provider VM. Uh, and then in the last section, what we're going to do is we're actually going to put a flow on a schedule uh, and register this against our prefect server that's being hosted in that AWS VM. And then we're going to spin up for Q and agents to pick up the work and run that prefect flow. So with that, let's talk start talking about workflow orchestration. So workflow orchestration uh, is both pretty straightforward of a term. You probably already have a good idea of what it is, but it's also, a lot of people also have different exact definitions for what it is. But basically it's a set of tools that uh, schedule and monitor uh, work that, uh, that, that work that you want to accomplish, right? So if you have a machine learning pipeline, for example, that you want to run every week, you put it on a schedule. And if that machine learning model trail uh, fails, or maybe the data coming in fails, then you want to get observability into the into the issues or uh, that cause it to fail so that you can fix them. So as a simple example, let's this is uh, very close to the uh, example that we had in the previous uh, video. But let's say you have a machine learning pipeline and there's just a couple more steps here that are extra. So first of all, we have a uh, Postgres SQL database, and maybe we have a job that outputs uh, some data, some joins into a parquet file, and then we use pandas to ingest that parquet file, combine it with some API data that we're pulling, and then we pass that to scikit-learn to train a model, and uh, once we train a model, we register the artifact and the experiment to MLflow, maybe if it meets some certain conditions, we want to deploy it, right? So it's a very standard machine learning pipeline, but if you look at it, um, these steps are really interconnected, right? So if this API calls, what do we do for this uh, pandas data frame? If our database is intermittently down, undergoing maintenance, and we can't output this parquet, what do we then do? And what do we then do with downstream tasks as well? So 
here uh, in, in scikit-learn model training may fail. So we don't write stuff to MLflow, right? Or like we don't deploy any model based on some certain conditions. So in general, there are a lot of places that this can fail. And failure can even be in ways that we don't expect, right? Data comes in malformed. Uh, API just randomly uh, doesn't, doesn't connect. Same thing with MLflow. Maybe you're using a database to back your MLflow uh, uh, art, art, uh, red, like, uh, experiments. And maybe the database either has too many concurrent connections, you can connect, right? And stuff errors out. So errors intermittently happen. It's normal. And the goal of workflow orchestration is to both minimize the impact of these errors and to fail gracefully when they do happen. And as we kind of look at more interconnected pipelines, what you're going to find is that uh, there are more places that things can fail because there's there's a lot more uh, activity going on. So here we have two interconnected pipelines. Maybe one of them uses uh, is our machine learning pipeline, but maybe some of the data is shared up here by this BI sort of pipeline where we have uh, Postgres writing out some part case and there's a pandas uh, step that combines all this data, maybe does some data processing on it, and then writes it out to another table again, so that we or up or updates a table so that Tableau can visualize it, right? And if we put this on the schedule, uh, there there are there are ways that there are a lot more failure points now because of this like interconnected pipeline. Uh, so in when we talk about workflow orchestration, we want maybe hey if this step fails, we can still run this, or if this step fails maybe we have some failure mechanism to deal with it. Uh, but so failure uh, workflow orchestration also dictates when we want downstream tasks to run or not. So you, you may be thinking, hey, if an API goes down, you know, we can just simply retry that call. Same thing if the malform data comes in, maybe we can just change the data. Um, maybe if uh, we can send ourselves a Slack alert, and what you're going to find is that more and more, you're going to find that you're coding against failure. You're coding to make sure that uh, you're, you're coding against these negative, scenario, uh, negative scenarios from happening. And that's what at Prefect we call negative engineering, right? So uh, when Prefect was first founded three years ago, there was this common saying that data scientists spend, you know, like 10% uh, of their job modeling, and that other 90% is all this other stuff, right? So in Prefect, we find the same thing in data engineering. 90% of engineering time is spent on uh, negative engineering. So people are hired for specific uh, business use cases. Like you are going to make a model that predicts if customers are leaving, for example, right? You are building a recommendation model, right? But majority of the time is actually spent on the stuff, making sure that this 10% is Performing prop it is uh, performing properly, right? So, uh, Prefect's mission is if we can reduce this uh, negative engineering from ninety percent down to eighty percent or seventy percent, to give you more time on the business use cases, we can double or triple developer productivity. So, when we talk about workflow orchestration, it's a it's a set of features that aim to eliminate negative engineering. So, we give you retries off the shelf we give you observability into failure. If you want certain failure paths, we make it easy for those to be coded uh, in, right? So in this first section, we discuss what workflow orchestration is and negative engineering. In the next section, I'm going to introduce Prefect, the, pro uh, the project.